Hi, so I was on one of my occasional AliExpress shopping binges recently and I came across this. This is a uh, 32 amp EVSC or more commonly known uh, EV charger, which is unusual in that normally these things have a lump in the cord which has sort of some of the control um, stuff in it, but this was just the cable. And this was £52.79, so extremely cheap. So I just wondered, well, you know, how, how bad can it be? This is using the standard UK European 32 amp industrial connector. Surprisingly, it wasn't actually mentioned on the listing, but it actually even includes the socket. These sockets don't comply with UK wire wiring regs uh, for domestic use because there's no shuttering on the connectors. You could, in theory, you know, stick a, something in there to get a shock. For a legal UK domestic install, you'd need to use an interlock socket like this. This is arranged so that you can't switch it on if there's no plug connected and you can't unplug it while it's switched on. So there's a mechanical interlock between the uh, electrical switch and the uh, physical connector. This is actually the IP67 waterproof version of this uh, type of connector which uses this um, external locking ring and a seal here. But uh, looking at this, I, I, wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't trust this to be used outdoors because the, the sealing around here is uh, not particularly uh, well implemented. The obvious difference between this and certainly some of the other things I've looked at in the past is there's no lump in the cord, so yeah, everything's been integrated. The, the question really is what, what is everything? Now, these things basically have three jobs. Firstly, they send a PWM signal to the car to tell the car how much current it's allowed to draw. Six amps up to 32. I think there's also specs are higher than 32 amps, but 32 is the most common maximum uh, in most cases. Secondly, they provide earth leakage protection, um, sort of residual current circuit breaker protection, so that if the cable gets damaged or water gets in, it cuts it out. Thirdly, it also switches the power on and off based on when it thinks it's actually plugged into the car. So the car actually has a, um, a diode on its connector to differentiate it between, between being plugged into a car and just some random load or water ingress. Now, strictly speaking, only the first of those three functions is actually essential. And I think this is basically what, the, what we're looking at here. It's just providing that signal. There's no protection. There's no on-off switching. So... Yeah, okay, this does work. You'd have to be careful as to how you use it. For example, I, yeah, I wouldn't consider using this any, anywhere outdoors where it might get wet because there's no RCD protection. You can't necessarily guarantee that the connector that you're plugging this into has upstream RCD protection, although yeah, it may well have often, but you can't necessarily guarantee that. And the, um, the switching on, switching off based on whether it's plugged into the car, Again, that's not essential, but it wouldn't surprise me if there are some cars that might throw an error if it sees power being applied when it's, the car is not asking for it. So uh, it works fine on my car, but it, it's entirely possible that there are cars this won't work with because, for that reason. Now, just on first look, it doesn't look ridiculously sketchy. Um, the cable is marked 6mm square, which is, a perfect, yeah, which is the rating you need. And the quick thermal test I did does indicate that it is, it, yeah, it is actually that. It's not CCA or some horrible uh, nasty cheapo cable. Feels sort of reasonably okay. The plug itself again feels sort of reasonable. There's no sort of brand. There's no branding on these plugs, so they are, may not meet the letter of every spec they're supposed to. But they seem to be sort of reasonably okay. I wouldn't have too many concerns about it. The uh, connector pins themselves look fairly well constructed. Um, they look like they're probably silver plated with the, um, yeah, the, the sort of the sort of contact shape that you'd expect. So uh, yeah, all in all, yeah, although extremely cheap, it doesn't feel immensely sketchy. And this is available with a few different lead lengths. This is the cheapest version, which is three meter, but these are available in up to um, fifteen meter cable lengths. Okay, so let's give this thing a go. Just plugged it in. We've got this. Uh, Flashing red lead on the side, and as we expect, the uh, pins are live straight away, no switching. Okay, and we appear to be charging, charging at 7.1 kilowatts. Now, there's no uh, sort of switch or anything to manually stop the charge. Uh, different cars probably handle this different ways. Obviously the, the thing's locked in by the car once it starts charging, but on my car at least, if you just um, unlock it, it then releases it 
and unplugs it actually reduces the charge rate not quite to zero but down to about half a kilowatt um, for about 15 seconds to give you a chance to unplug it. The reason for that is obviously if you're charging somewhere you might be charging somewhere at a public charger you wouldn't want it to stop the session because you might just want to unlock the car to get in the car without stopping the charge session so it behaves fairly sensibly it reduces the charge current low enough to be safe to unplug without causing any arcing but uh, whilst maintaining the, um, the charge session. Now one thing I want to just check is what happens if we actually disconnect the source of the supply. Does that then unlock? Okay, I've just disconnected this at source and the car, yes the car has unlocked. Obviously that wouldn't be a particularly good way of doing it because you're disconnecting sort of 32 amps so the switch or breaker you're using to disconnect it you know, is going to suffer some wear and tear if you uh, if you do that regularly but at least you can do it. Quickly check how much this uh, draws in standby mode. So it's 0.7 watts, which is uh, fine. You wouldn't expect it to draw much. It hasn't gotten all the smart stuff that um, more complex chargers have, so there isn't really much to be drawing any current. Okay, let's take a look inside. This is actually quite tricky to get apart. There's one screw in here, but there's also uh, sort of these latches, so it needs a small amount of applied. Uh, persuasion just to unclip all those at once but there is this quite nice seal around here and inside we've got just the lead glued onto the uh, outside of the case and then this uh, heat shrunk uh, little module okay so in here um, there's a couple of connectors which is nice but uh, it's where it starts getting a little bit more sketchy this is our incoming mains for our local power supply you know. JST connector which wouldn't have been quite so bad yeah they have used only the other two pins but they haven't yeah, removed that centre pin so that the actual clearance across here is uh, pretty dismal uh, there is an isolation slot that's between the incoming mains and some of the low voltage side but the actual isolation gap on the converter between the mains and low voltage side is not great the actual chip the actual power supply chip is mounted underneath the transformer. Just about see it there. So yeah, most of the primary to secondary clearance is sort of occupied by components. So yeah, not great. Three four zero six three switching regulators. Long time since I've seen one of those. So this will be generating sort of probably a five or maybe a three point three volt supply for this micro. This is a eight H one K O eight STC micro. Um, this isn't really doing much. I'm surprised they've even used you know, a 16-pin package because all this needs to do is generate the PWM signal corresponding to the 32-amp current limit and just a little bit of sensing to drive the lead and that's pretty much it. So uh, very little needed here. And they've interestingly used an opto-isolated gate driver. This will be to generate the PWM signal, which is a bipolar signal. Although, as I say, they're not making use of the isolation here because the um, because the um, PWM signal is referenced to mains earth. This might have just been a convenient way of generating that bipolar signal with an off-the-shelf part rather than... Uh, but yeah, I mean, the build quality looks okay, but there, there's definitely some uh, failings in the isolation distance. And the reason that's an issue, of course, is that the car's inputs, yeah, control inputs, uh, the control pilot pin on the um, car side is referenced to mains earth but obviously it's a low voltage thing so if the insulation on this failed and it put, put mains down that um, wire it could potentially blow up the onboard charger on the car which could be a fairly expensive uh, repair bill if that happened. Yeah, there's no particular reason for the cars for that pin to be protected against mains connection so I suspect some cars might tolerate it otherwise others may well not do. But the only, I mean, there is an MOV there for transient protection. There's no MC, no um, EMC filtering on here. But uh, yeah, so this is fairly basic. So I'm just a little bit surprised that they didn't use an 8-pin uh, micro on here. So just have a quick poke around here. It's running this off DC to avoid having mains on the board while I'm messing with it. So this uh, switching converter generates 12 volts. There's a small buck regulator here for 5 volts for the micro. 34063 generates minus 12 volts because the um, PWM signals bipolar has to go to plus and minus 12 volts. This gate driver chip is, is generating that plus minus 12 volt PWM. That's uh, pretty much it. I'm sure this could have done, be done a bit cheaply. Certainly this optical isolator is a bit superfluous. They could have uh, done that with a few bipolar transistors if they really knew what they were doing. But 
So when the car's initially connected, it presents a 2.7k resistance. So that's now turned. And the LEDs are sort of purpley colour. This looks like a red-blue LED. And if I then reduce that to the 1k or so, when the car's actually wanting to charge, you can see that starts flashing. You can see the PWM signal, the high value when the car's in its waiting to charge state, and then the car puts some load on it to ask for power, but obviously this doesn't switch the power, so this thing doesn't really care. The only thing it does is it starts flashing the LED. So that's just the uh, loading. Um, it's not checking for the presence of the diode, but there's no reason for it to because it's not really doing anything. It's not switching, so there's no reason for it to do that. So, Okay, so you really have to ask, why do these things exist? And I think the answer must simply be because they're cheap. I mean, you know, if you're spending several thousand on an EV, why would you cheap out on, you know, maybe 70 quid difference between one of these and a proper unit if you wanted to have this, this style of charger? It seems to make no sense. They do work, they do charge the car, but, you know, they... they leave out important safety features. I think probably the worst being the fact that, yeah, because this isn't isolating the supply, yeah, these pins here are live. So if this was left somewhere where someone could poke something in or maybe drop in a puddle, or maybe this sort of could get damaged, there will be you know, pretty much no protection against um, access to live parts. So yeah, I certainly couldn't recommend that anyone buys one of these. If you really know what you're doing and using it in dry conditions and want something for emergency use, maybe. But um, I was actually looking on AliExpress to find out, you know, what the cost difference is between this and the like the proper ones with the uh, the proper isolation and relays and everything. And I was really surprised. I could not find any proper ones. They were all these things. Some of them down as low as fifty quid. The the ones that I reviewed a few years ago, you know, are fine safety wise. But I just I couldn't actually find any of those anymore. The there's also quite a lot of listings of these for lower power, like 13 amp UK plug ones, which would replace the typical sort of granny charger uh, type scenario for plugging in from a domestic socket. Some car manufacturers buy those with the car, but some don't. And you know, I think obviously the risk is that someone will just see one and they say, oh, yeah, it's a cheap charger, let's, let's go and use it without really understanding the, um, the dangers. So, yeah, although, yes, it, yes, it works, you know, I just sort of despair at this race to the bottom which i mean yeah the actual build quality of this isn't particularly bad the cable's okay the connectors are reasonably okay clearance across the board is not ideal but just about okay but it's just the yeah the, the very concept of this and i'm sure you know there probably are some of these with you know maybe four mil cable or aluminium cable or stuff that's uh, even less adequate and perhaps uh, less robust uh, connectors who knows uh, you know, i was actually quite shocked that i could not find a proper inline cable 32 amp charger on aliexpress there's there's a few on ebay when it comes to like the 13 amp socket or traditional domestic socket there are plenty of options there's certainly in the uk screw fix and argos two units for about 129 pounds which are you know, i'm sure i've built fine um, there were one or two on eBay and Amazon. I even found these on Amazon UK as well, um, which was uh, not great because yeah, your average buyer isn't really going to understand the difference between one of these and one that's um, got the proper safety features. The other advantage, particularly for like occasional emergency use, you know, the, the units that have got the boxes generally have a way of controlling the amount of current that they draw. So you may well be using this in a situation where you're not you don't actually have the full 32 amps available, perhaps a campsite or yeah, some situation like that where you want to be able to limit the, the current and yeah, this doesn't let you do that. Obviously they could, I suppose they could do a version of this with some sort of switch in here that let you set that, but um, none of the ones I've seen seem to do that. But, yeah, so um, product that really shouldn't exist, but seems to be the default standard and it's available everywhere. And unfortunately, yeah, people don't really understand why these are bad and I would imagine at some point someone is probably going to get a shock off one of these. Let's just hope nobody uh, ends up dying from it.